players on to the our run. resistance. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet, the highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease? It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to Big Pharma. The fight against the New World Order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine if you're sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products. And get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record. Reports documented a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. There's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of, of the world. Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. We are joined for the next 25 minutes by Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. He's an American economist. And he's, of course, a syndicated columnist as well. He's a former editor of the Wall Street Journal and Business Week. And he is the father of Reaganomics. And he's really uh, needs no introduction to our audience. We have a lot of new stations, a lot of new listeners, so I guess he does. And uh, we'll give you his website address as well uh, on screen coming up here uh, in just a moment. We also carry his work at InfoWars.com and Prison planet.com uh, but before i go any further I, I just want to cover the waterfront with him to make sense of what's going on in the economic meltdown clearly a global depression uh this market watch article scary 1929 market chart uh, gains traction um government is gearing up for a collapse i think we're going into a slow collapse but i want to get an update from him on that but first the reason i wanted to get him on last week and now he's here is to talk about Ukraine. And again, I'm not a Putinite, but compared to what we've got, uh, you know, our system's so bad, he, he, he's not ag aggressively trying to expand things and stop the Syria war, the purge of Christians. Clearly the Saudi Arabians are bombing them because they didn't go along with the takeover of Syria to destabilize uh, the Olympics. 
But uh, you, you, uh, you see Ukraine not voting at first to go with uh, the EU. And now um, Russia is not even trying to control Ukraine from what I've seen. Uh, I want a free and independent Ukraine. And George Soros' people are all over this as usual trying to destabilize Russia because they want a new world order run by the Wall Street kleptocrats. They want a new world order run by anti-free market folks that make the wolf of Wall Street Jordan Belford looked like a saint, uh, and uh, that's, that's the bottom line. This is not America doing this to Russia. This is criminal elements doing it, in, in my view. I want Dr. Roberts' take on that. So, so there's the preface of, of, of my questions and how I see it. Uh, this is a big deal, though, to, to be trying to overthrow Ukraine and audio recordings of this, obviously, with ambassadors coming out and a very serious situation, uh, Dr. Roberts. Uh, give us your expert breakdowns. I know you were in big talks with the Russians, to, so they bring down their, their empire at the end of the Reagan administration. I know that you know a lot of these folks. You know the French. Uh, you've gotten their highest award uh, for some of the work you've done on that front as well. What's really happening right now? And the Ukraine... Um there was a, a joint effort initially between the EU and Washington uh, to uh, bring the <clears throat> EU, uh, sorry, to bring the Ukraine into NATO and into EU. Now, the, the EU just wanted uh, an expansion of its uh, domain. Uh, Washington wanted uh, to uh, have uh, the Ukraine incorporated into NATO so they can put more military bases on Russia's frontier. And they also want to uh, have their puppets running the country so that can be opened up for looting by the American banks and the American corporations, you know, like, for example, Latvia was. So what has happened is... Uh, for uh, many years, uh, Washington and also the EU have been financing uh, what are called NGOs, non-governmental organizations in Ukraine. Last December, this uh, Victoria Newland, the Assistant Secretary of State who's running the operation, the American operation there, told the National Press Club that Washington had invested five billion dollars in agitation in the Ukraine. And so what we're witnessing now is all of these NGOs, some of them pretend to be human rights organizations, some pretend to be educational, to teach democracy, uh, some are just uh, provocative. Um, and they have uh, used these, uh, that is the State Department, the CIA, have used these uh, institutions, these NGOs, uh, to uh, uh, have this ongoing protest. Now, the EU and Washington have now fallen out over this because the EU has realized that uh, for Washington to take over the Ukraine is a direct threat to Russia. And they realize that Russia can cut uh, Europe off from oil and natural gas, and they realize that if there's a war, uh, Europe will be destroyed. And that's why we don't need Ukraine to fall to the EU that's going to suck it dry. That's like asking to have cancer implanted in you. Clearly yeah. predatory. As you know, their own EU documents have come out that it was a planned program to consolidate and suck countries dry. So the Ukrainians vote to not join it. And so they have hordes of paid operatives take to the streets. It'd be one thing if these were real you know, uh, Ukrainians wanting to get rid of their government. But clearly these are foreign manipulated saboteur operatives by every by every benchmark well um the ngos are financed uh, by the west and they're they have provoked it but i think most of the people out there are just dupes and they're ukrainians oh, of course uh, yeah the, the western ukraine is sure, i'm uh, talking about the ngos that are made up of ukrainian operatives sorry i was talking about the ngos themselves doctors yeah yeah, Go ahead. yeah well uh, I was in Washington when they decided to create the uh, National Endowment for Democracy, which is sort of the parent organization for these NGOs. And the explicit purpose given was that it would be used uh, to destabilize uh, Eastern Europe and, uh, and, uh, and Soviet republics and would be used for the benefit of uh, American hegemony, and that's the reason it was created. And so we've seen it operate in many places. 
Uh, they tried to achieve that uh, revolution, that color revolution in the Ukraine. What they call it? The Orange Revolution, I think. Yes, they've tried over and over again. And they came very close to getting the Ukraine then. And, uh, and they tried to have Georgia start a war with Russia. A very dangerous situation. Um, what do you expect Russia to do? I mean, they're, they're, they're starting to really get in more of a fighting stance. Well, I don't know uh, what they would do. Um, I one prospect is the country will split apart because the the eastern Ukraine is more Russian. It's Russian Orthodox. Uh, the western Ukraine is less Russian. It's Catholic. Um, and I think that it's really two countries, and what you may see is uh, is a split. Um, what I find so distressing is that the uh, Ukrainians in the I think these protests are largely in the West, Western part. No, they are. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and and so uh, what I find distressing is that these protesters are such dupes that they're destroying the independence of their own country. They they don't understand that if you are in the EU that your national government is subservient to the EU. How government. can they not look at Greece and Spain and Ireland and everywhere? I mean, this is like wanting to get in the car with Jeffrey Dahmer or something. Why would anyone want to join the EU? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that just shows the influence of the NGOs. You know, the NGOs, like Victoria Newland said, uh, Washington has spent $5 billion. That's $5,000 million. You can buy a lot of people for that money. <laughs> you can buy a lot. And, and the years of agitation by these NGOs, uh, and, and also, you know, in the, in the Western Ukraine, there's a huge disaffection from Russia. Uh, they, there's this romantic form of Ukrainian nationalism. And uh, there's a real uh, dislike of, of Russia. So even though Ukraine is independent now, uh, they have this notion that, well, the country will uh, somehow be under Russia's thumb unless we can get under the thumb of the Europeans and the Americans. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of a nonsensical thing, but it is very dangerous because uh, I think that the Russians do view uh, a NATO basis in the Ukraine, or in Ukraine as it's called now. That's right on their border. As as a direct threat. And so they, and, and this is why there is now a, a divergence between the EU and uh, the United States and why the Victoria Newland said, you know, screw the EU. Now for those that don't know, tell them about that. Well, uh, the, the, Europeans realized that this was going too far and they wanted to stop encouraging the protests because they understand that it dawned on them that it's a threat to Russia and then therefore it's an indirect threat to Europe. And so they, the Europeans, the EU, said, we've had enough, let's stop these protests. And Washington said, no, we're going to keep them going. We're going to use the protests, turn it into a revolt. Uh, take over the government. See, we've got a list of the candidates we're going to put in charge. And the EU was protesting. And, and by the way, that's what the Russians used to do, was get a quasi-puppet government in that would then invite them into these countries. We are doing what the USSR used to do. I mean, this is, we're doing the bad guy <laughs> deeds, correct? No, but we always have, especially in, in uh, Central and South America. There's never been any difference, really between the United States and the Soviet Union and how they manipulate other countries. But what we're doing now is we're manipulating the countries in the Russian sphere of influence. <laughs> We've gone beyond our own sphere. Of the whole world now is our sphere of influence. No, no other country has. And what do you make, what's the strategy? I mean, I want your take on this to have the athletes dressing like women. Uh, I mean, you know, everybody loved us because of James Dean and John Wayne. And, and I mean, guys look dressed like women, that's great. But should our national symbol be a man in drag? I mean, should that be our symbol at the, uh, at the Olympics? I, I don't think that propaganda is very well thought out. <laughs> no, it's not. But we don't need to, to get into that right now. We've got the Ukraine and the economy, which are important. No, no, absolutely. I'm just saying, uh, like British uh, you know, Deputy Defense Minister said two weeks ago, 
the United States doesn't even seem to have a strategy now.